Happy New Year. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ashley. This is Mindful Money. And I know in my brain that there is nothing magical about January 1st, but I still love the start of a fresh year. So over the past couple days, I've been doing a little bit of reflecting, but I've mostly been thinking about myself this time next year and how I wanna be feeling. Like I'm proud of myself for accomplishing savings goals. I'm feeling stronger physically, also stronger in my relationships and generally just a little bit calmer and more organized. And as I'm going through those feelings I want, I think to myself, what would a person who feels that way be doing today? What goals would they be setting? What habits would they be building? And if you watched way back when, which I cannot believe that video was filmed this year, that's crazy to me, but the Habits for 2020 video, I think I had just started reading Atomic Habits and that is still my favorite book I read all year. This is one of my favorite quotes from the book. Decide the type of person you want to be, prove it to yourself with small wins. So if you clicked on this video because you want 2021 to be the year you get your finances in order, I wanted to give you a few things you can start doing right now to make that happen. The first thing is so simple yet so powerful and that is to track and categorize all of your spending. You can use pen and paper if that's your thing. You could use the notes app on your phone or an Excel spreadsheet or an app like You Need a Budget. When I was first getting my finances in order, I had decided to use You Need a Budget but I was not 100% sold yet. I had tried different budgeting programs and apps in the past and they never stuck. I think it was one of those new year, new me, I'm gonna start using this and tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and be magically a new person who hardly spends any money. That wouldn't happen. I would get frustrated with myself and I would quit. But here's the thing, going back to that quote from James Clear, I think we need to start with small wins. Tracking is easy but it's also a new habit you're having to add to your life. So build that in first. And the simple act of writing down or entering your spending will make you more connected with your money and you can't help but be more mindful of your spending. And once you've been doing that for a while, you're gonna have a lot of great information. Let's say I run out today, go to Target, I'll put that into You Need a Budget and I'll categorize that as household goods. So because I have all these categories, when I'm looking back over my spending, it's very easy to see where my money is going. And as you're looking back, don't let this become a judgment thing, actually be a little bit more curious. What can I learn about myself from my spending. And you might see some areas, I have a hobby that I love and I'm not really spending any money on it. So is there something I could cut out that I'm not getting a lot of enjoyment from? Maybe that's cable, cut that out and you're gonna have more money to put into your hobby. And that's where we start to align our spending with our priorities. If you're sitting there watching thinking that sounds good, but I'm all in and I want to supercharge 2021, what can I do? I would recommend a money reset. I did one of these for 34 days starting October 1st with some of my teammates from You Need a Budget. We had three rules, track all of your spending, only buy essentials. We all had different guidelines for that. I cut out anything frivolous, video games, clothes, skincare, and we didn't eat out, not a single thing, for 34 days. It was hard, it was awesome, and we're gonna host a second round of that, and we've created a really great workbook. And I think the best thing about the workbook is that it makes you, right at the beginning, choose your why. What is your big savings goal? And when I would try to save when I was younger, it felt like I was doing it to be a good person, like responsible people save, so I guess I should do that too. But I didn't get serious about saving until I started listing out all of my goals. So this 34 day reset, you choose one big goal and everything you save for those 34 days you put toward it. And it can be a responsible goal or it can be a super fun goal. When I did it back in October, I am currently saving for a car. So that was my big goal and I made so much progress. So if you wanna join for round two of the 34 day reset, all of that information will be listed down below. We would love to have you. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. I've only talked about money so far, but something else I think we should do in 2021 is invest in ourselves. That could be developing our skills. I recently took Ali Abdals, who's one of my favorite YouTubers. I took his course about how he creates his content. It was awesome. I learned so much. I got connected to new people who have similar interests to me. And it got me really excited about what other courses I could take. And as a Christmas present to myself, I bought a virtual 
cooking class so that I can develop my cooking skill and become more confident in the kitchen. Investing in yourself is so interesting to me. I'd like to do an entire video about it because I think it can go in lots of different ways, not just developing a new skill. We could buy back time by outsourcing or add in time for creativity into our calendars or spend time up front to make life easier for ourselves in the future. That's one of my goals for 2021. I want to create a B-roll library. So I have all these little clips of me doing stuff around the house or using the You Need a Budget app. And when I need those, when I'm sitting down to film, they are lost in the jungle that is my external hard drive. So I wanna spend a few hours to organize all that so that when future me is editing videos, it's a lot easier and can save me a lot of time. If we wanna get our finances in order in 2021, we can organize other areas of our life. Sadly, I'm not naturally good at money or a very organized person. I live in a little bit of chaos and that's something I always am trying to work on. And as I've done that, I realize how connected money and organization is. When my fridge and pantry are organized, I can save money by building out meal plans based on food I already have. And I'm not worried about food going bad because I know what I have and when I need to eat it by. You could also build organization into your budget. If you have you need a budget, you can use goals or scheduled transactions to remind yourself of when bills are due so you're not paying them late and incurring any kind of fees. And I also like to add in organization to my calendar. If there are important dates, birthdays, anniversaries, add them into my calendar so I'm not having to rely on my brain to remember things. And because I'm reminded of them when I look through my calendar or my planner, maybe I can even shop early and shop sales. If part of your money plan for the new year is paying off debt, I would say you have to pick a strategy that works for you. And if you wanna know about all the different debt pay down strategies, Hannah and Ben have filmed an entire course. It's called How to Get Out of Debt and Stay Out. It's about an hour long. Not only is it hilarious, it's also full of good information and they go over the different kind of debt pay down methods. So if you wanna watch that, I'll have a link to that down below. I've talked about my own money story on the channel a few times. I had a head in the sand approach, hated thinking about money, hated talking about money. So to become a person who loves to talk about it, I can't believe I get to film these videos is amazing. And that whole transformation started with a book. So I love the thought of adding in learning about personal finance to your money makeover this year. The book that started it all for me, you need a budget. The other two I recommend and loan out to friends, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi and The Simple Path To Wealth by J.L. Collins. These three are a great place to start and I've begun writing out my reading list for 2021 and Chris from Popcorn Finance, which is one of my favorite personal finance podcasts, shared his recent favorite books. And there was two by Kate Flanders, The Year of Less, and Adventures in Opting Out. And then You Need a Budget writer Rachel also recommended Psychology of Money. As you're thinking about all this and deciding what habits to add to your own life, tracking your spending, checking your budget, consider a gratitude practice. That makes it sound very big and fancy. For me, it's not. It's a simple line in my journal. I write down one thing I'm grateful for every day. I'm not always faithful with it, but when I am, I'm so much more content in other areas in my life. And I know a lot of us are on long journeys. We have a long pay down plan or we're saving up for something big that's gonna take us a while to get there. Contentment and gratitude can ground us and make us more likely to stay the course. I am grateful for you. Thank you for watching. We want all the best for you in 2021. Please consider subscribing, tons of content coming out, and we would love to have you be a part of the 34 Day Reset. Links down below.